What up friends, Liron here. Today I want to share with you a really cool exercise for pen sketching and painting people, which looks something like this. This will be the first video out of two. What happens was that I recorded and there's just so much material that I just can't compress it to be under like an hour. And I don't want it to be an hour. An hour feels a little too much for me. So I'm splitting it into two videos. First video, I'm gonna show you the process of ink sketching and it's gonna be real time. This is why it's so long. I wanna show you exactly how I approach uh, inking the people straight with ink. I'm not using pencil this time, and which is what makes it different from the previous video. And the second video that I'm gonna to publish tomorrow will be the wash, okay? I'm gonna do it in two washes and I'm gonna explain more in depth how I'm doing it. Uh, basically one very simple wash and then another one just to bring out the highlights and the darks, okay? So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm starting now with the first figure. Um, and I think what's going to be really interesting with this video is that you will see uh, a variety of figures. Some that I feel like I was able to capture pretty well and others that may be terrible. <laughs> so it's like both. Um, one thing I noticed actually after recording, and this is something new that I learned about myself, is that I am having a lot of uh, trouble with the proportions sometimes. Uh, I have a repeating error where I make the, the legs too short. The, the lower body part is too short and it should be as tall as the head and torso, for example, approximately. Um, so you will see this now, but this is a good warm-up. I just start with a uh, first sketch and I'm not expecting it to be too crazy. Uh, just trying to throw out the lines in there. Um, usually starting from top to bottom, it just makes more sense. Um, not not really building with this approach like um, the anatomy or uh, gesture or anything like that. I'm not looking necessarily for a line of motion. All I'm looking for is just to sketch it out as simply as possible. Um, I think this approach alone isn't necessarily enough. And um, I think it should come together with some uh, gesture drawing. Um, so you do want to sometimes focus on the line of uh, action, main line of action. These are things I will hopefully cover in the future. Um, but anyway, what you can see here is that uh, the legs part is way too short and that's okay. Like I want you to see both the successes and the failures and this is like the very first one. Um, it's funny because the moment I turn on the camera, I become much more stifled in my sketching. Uh, so this is something I'm working on. With this one, you'll see a little bit of an improvement. So starting with the head, just drawing a sort of an oval shape and I'm breaking it down to lines. Uh, so it's not really a circle because I find them hard to sometimes uh, get right. So I sort of break circles into multiple lines. And I'm just trying to get that general shape of the of the jacket. Um, if there's a clothing item, I just ignore the figure and go straight to drawing it. I'm not trying to imagine right now uh, what's underneath it. I don't really care about it. Um, but depending on the approach I take, I may care about it. If I do go the more gesture drawing route, uh, then I may care about it. Um, so we're just trying to go through the sketch, uh, going uh, through the hand, uh, sort of giving a very light indication of the fingers. Hands is something that like you need to focus on, really focus your efforts for a while on. Uh, once you do, you sort of internalize some part of it and you learn how to draw them better. Uh, but for me, for example, I practice so much uh, drawing hands and like this is a result. Not, not that crazy, even though I practiced a lot in the past. Because it's something you need to constantly be doing. Now the main thing that will indicate the motion here in this uh, specific um, figure is the legs. So you have one leg that's sort of forward, which is the one I'm working on right now, and then you have another leg that's uh, been, that's coming from the back because it's just being sent forward right now as a part of the walking uh, cycle. So usually the legs will be a really good indication of um, the, the gesture or the motion. Um, sometimes you don't want to uh, go overboard with them depending on what your figures are used for. Uh, so uh, right now I'm just doing this as an exercise, but if I put that figure into a painting, I may be much more um, 
much less detailed in my approach and the legs can be reduced to maybe a single brush stroke or two brush strokes or three brush strokes um, anything like that um, now a lot of these sketches will really come into life once paint is added which as I said you will see in the next video um, I I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit uh, regretting it a bit. not regretting but I, I think it would be really cool to show it immediately after but it just won't work out in this specific uh, video so hopefully in the future I will show it just one after another but for now I do want to focus on the sketching uh, so I'm just trying to get the <laughs> shape of that fluffy dog um, not really didn't really manage to but um, I, I was a bit impatient I have to admit it kind of takes me time to get uh, into the zone um, and yeah once the camera turns on I really start to think okay people are gonna see this what shall I do things like this uh, which is why it's really important for me to balance uh, practice time that's really like off camera to myself not worrying too much um, so the next figure, uh, and really here you don't even see the head, it's just covered by the hair and uh, sort of a hoodie um, of this puffy sweater she's wearing. Uh, so I'm just trying to build up the shape of the hair, then start from the, the hoodie. And uh, I'm trying to recognize the angles in which the lines are at. Now it may be a little skewed due to the angle of the camera. Uh, so some angles I may have, may have gotten correctly and they may look incorrect and vice versa. Some angles I may have made a mistake in, <laughs> but they will look correct in the video. Um, so anyway, just uh, building it up slowly, um, doing the jacket. Now, uh, the um, one way to convey this jacket is really its puffiness. And I will try to get that sort of look in a moment by um, adding these sort of... Um, horizontal stripes to it. Um, sometimes I need to sort of stop and check out the reference. Uh, also, it wasn't uh, placed really close to me. I was looking at my computer screen and it was a bit at a distance. Uh, so hopefully uh, I still was able to get it. But but this is really something like people is not something I usually focus on. And so um, it does take some time to get back to. I did uh, much more of this in the past. Uh, so I think I will try to incorporate it in my uh, sort of art schedule, uh, whether it's watercolor or just sketching. Um, so there's a very interesting thing here with the legs. So one leg is at the back, which is the left leg is sort of at the back, and the right one is in the front. And uh, it's really about balance, the way the, the figure is balancing uh, itself um, and the, the, the center of balance. All of these things that I'm now trying to get intuitively but uh, aren't necessarily that easy to always get intuitively uh, and so sometimes you do need to use uh, guidelines and things like this for me it's sometimes easy to recognize shape and form uh, but it's definitely not uh, the only correct way or the cor most correct way um, so on to the next one uh, a very well defined shape of the head just felt confident to just put it in uh, using some straight lines and now, uh, as always, moving on to the first uh, clothing item that I can see. Um, I like to work really uh, in the mindset of comparison. I always compare. I try to compare one line to another, one shape to another. Um, I was asked, like, how do you get the right line? How do you get the line to look like you want? Um, and it's not really, not always easy, but usually it comes down to comparing. So when I'm, now when I'm, uh, I finished with the upper body part and I will uh, approach the legs. I'm trying to see, uh, and you will see this in just a moment, where does the leg start in comparison to the to the jacket he's wearing, uh, which is like sort of a uh, motorcycle jacket, I guess. Um, something strong against the wind. And so I'm trying to figure out just now where does the leg start. And on the right, it starts at the very edge of the jacket which I saw needed some to extension, it wasn't long enough, and this line of the leg is almost uh, horizontal, almost uh, vertical, sorry, and then the, there's the lower part of the leg is at a slight angle. Now here it's a bit less vertical, it's more veers towards the right, uh, just getting that fold in, some small details, and this one is more horizontal, um, vertical, sorry, uh, so you really all you do is compare. When I now approach uh, in a moment drawing the second leg, uh, it's exactly what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to try and figure out um, where it is, 
and how to place it. And I may try to do a video that's, uh, I think it will be really a good idea. A video that focuses more on the gesture angle and really building it up uh, using lines of motion and um, center of, of, uh, of weight. Uh, all these more advanced concepts that, that honestly I don't feel like I'm, I'm controlling uh, fully yet. Um, I'm really more a type of a see it and sketch it kind of guy. Um, but but yeah, I could definitely benefit from that and also you as well. Uh, but if there are people that, like I'm curious to hear in a comment even, leave me a comment below, if you are um, more able to connect to the direct approach of just seeing it and trying to sketch it, or if you prefer the sort of uh, methodical way of um, building the figure properly and all of that, uh, which I'm a bit too impatient sometimes to try. Uh, onto the next uh, figure, I really don't have uh, the reference images for most of them. Some of them I have, some of them I don't, but the ones that I don't have um, from these ones, I also have some of them, but I just don't want to use them because they're um, they're not um, they're not royalty free. They're not free for use, so I don't want to put them here. I only put the ones that are allowed to use. Um, and uh, yeah, but the, the drawings are okay because it's just a drawing and and it's not really for profit or anything. But yeah, the picture itself, I don't want to put it here. Uh, this is one of the figures that I felt like I really messed up. Uh, it was really a challenge, and in this specific pose, it would have been a lot easier to try and build it properly uh, or rather in a more methodical way um, especially with the legs as you'll see in a moment um, a, a very challenging pose for me I think uh, it's really surprising sometimes you see a, a pose and you're like hey I can I can sketch that and and you just can do it and sometimes more po some other poses you just know they're, they're gonna be a big challenge and you just have to prepare yourself uh, for battle kind of um, yeah so now the legs this is like the real tricky part and especially if you're just going at it spontaneously like this um, so one leg is uh, sort of at the front while the the other leg is at the back uh, as happen as it happens so often in so many uh, different characters and poses um, and to get that look of the leg that's sort of um, at an angle and is foreshortened is really a challenge like I, I really struggled with, <laughs> with the shin here um, didn't know how to get it in the way I wanted to and maybe from far away uh, it will read properly um, but from up close not as much as I hoped for sure uh, but anyway, yeah, that's just part of it, and this is what I like about this exercise. You're um, you're playing on quantity and not necessarily quality. Um, I do think it should be balanced with quality as well. But if you do work in a very focused manner, you can afford sometimes to go over to go for uh, quantity because quantity and repetition um, are really big ingredients in improving. So now we have this uh, scene of a guy. He's walking to the left. Uh, he's facing us almost, um, and I believe uh, one leg is again at the front, and then another leg is slightly more at the back uh, as his mid-step. Um, this uh, this pose was actually <laughs> very confusing. Uh, again, you don't see the original uh, reference, but it was just um, a bit of a nightmare, I have to say. Um, I don't know why, but for me personally, if the character is right at the front, uh, it's easier for me to sketch it. And if it's from the side, it's easy for me to sketch it. But that's sort of a three-quarter view uh, I find to be very challenging. And he just had this uh, funny hat that I got in. Uh, so I find that pose uh, specifically challenging. Uh, and yeah, I think it's interesting to see how I deal with this, especially because I focus so much on uh, landscapes and city, city landscapes, nature landscapes. I just didn't get the part of the hair, but uh, because I zoomed in. But um, yeah, now with the face, it, this is a character that's uh, from the side, so you will see like a sort of an a, a, an upside down V shape with the legs, uh, one being sent forward and another to the back. Uh, he's wearing this uh, baggy sweater. And he has a bag. Um, I really like bags. It's like a fun component. Uh, by the way, a quick tip for you. Uh, just if you need these kinds of pictures, I don't necessarily recommend to search for um, just people or something like this. 
um, if you really want to get like um, a lot of reference in one place, search for keywords, search on Google images for like um, busy street, uh, busy square, maybe search for a specific city, even like Tokyo or New York. This is like a really good way to find one reference that has at least like two or three really good characters that you can sketch. And the reason I prefer that is because the characters are smaller. And this relates to a tip I want to give you about this exercise in general. You'll notice how the characters I'm sketching are really small. And there's a reason for that. Uh, because I do plan to paint it uh, using watercolor, I'm trying not to get a 100% finished look with the sketches. I do want to leave some room for the water. Now, when you work large, you tend to get more bogged down by the details, and we want to avoid that. We don't want that to happen. So, to prevent that, we're sketching smaller. And using a smaller reference is even better for, for that sometimes. Um, and so really try to get those uh, sketches to be really small, something like I would say a maximum size of maybe three inches, between two and four, I think that's like the, the sweet spot. Um, you don't want to go too large, but I will, um, I will um, sort of give an exception to this. Uh, if you see a pose that, <laughs> that you feel like really confident because sometimes you just know as I mentioned um, if you f see a pose that you really feel confident in sketching uh, and you feel like you want to do it uh, larger and the picture is clear like go for it uh, as you will see me do actually in a later stage of this exercise I um, I'm ca I kind of uh, decide to go for a bigger one also if you check out my previous video on painting people in watercolor uh, in that video I do pencil sketches and then come back with watercolor, um, you will also notice uh, that I just decided that I wanted to develop one of the figures a little more. It was actually two figures, the couple. Um, yeah, so I'm going to add this video and the following video uh, to the playlist of sketching and drawing and painting people. It will be a playlist dedicated to people, uh, figures, all of that good stuff. Um, and and so you can find the video I just mentioned and also this one will be there and, and a few more in that playlist. I'm, I'm going through a process of organizing my channel um, and making sure everything is categorized properly. Uh, a lot of videos sort of fall into multiple categories. Um, for example, this video is into uh, drawing, into spontaneous sketching, into people, so you have a few of them. And that way, if you just want to see one aspect of the channel, you can do that. I will create also a playlist um, dedicated just to videos that are outside. I do have a spontaneous, uh, a, a sort of a outdoors sketching and painting playlist, but I want to make a playlist that is sort of anything that's outside. So for example, yesterday I went to uh, get a new palette and some stuff and I recorded my way there and uh, the art store. So it's not really making art outside. It is a vlog and it's outside. So I want to make a playlist dedicated to those videos. Um, this figure, I kind of <laughs> didn't really know what I was doing with it. Um, her pants were baggy and I didn't know how to approach it. Um, some of these you may recognize if you just search for busy street, as I said, uh, because I usually choose the first first few results. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, this character is moving away from us, and I really like this one specifically, and I w will develop it more uh, using paint. Um, I'm just trying to to understand what angles to go for when drawing the the outline. Uh, now you have this uh, sleeve. Uh, you'll notice also you you will find yourself sketching a lot of clothes, of course. So um, you kind of learn how to put the, the folds in there uh, with time and experience. Uh, a lot of it is really challenging in the beginning, but once you kind of figure out the way cloth uh, behaves, I actually have a whole book on that uh, on Amazon. Once you realize how cloth behaves and sort of the major types of folds, there are um, a few of them, like about eight of them, uh, you sort of understand it. For example, on his right hand is what we call a spiral fold. Um, just a fold that happens when you raise your sleeves uh, and all the cloth bunches up. That's that's exactly it. It's called a spiral fold. Um, and yeah, there are usually on the jeans, they'll probably have some um, uh, zigzag uh, folds and you kind of learn how to put them in. Now, especially if you plan on painting later on, 
You want to keep the characters relatively clean. You don't want to go overboard with the details because what will happen is you will end up feeling like you're coloring a coloring book and you won't feel the freedom you need to feel with the watercolor in order to, to get a good result. Okay. Uh, by the way, notice how with this specific figure, I'm really hinting at the, the, the hands. There's really barely any details there, but you sort of get their direction. Uh, so that's something good as well. Like if you can simplify these sorts of things, you know, the, the brain understands what it sees. Um, <laughs> what my challenge now is to take that simplification process uh, with me to, to landscape uh, paintings and, and drawings. This is really a challenge there to know what to leave in, what to simplify. It's not always about uh, leaving out or leaving in something. It's not about just uh, reducing the details. It's actually about how you render them. Uh, I saw Steve Mitchell's uh, great video on uh, five things that uh, good artists do correctly. Um, so he also talks about it there. Uh, he talks about in the mind of watercolor channel. He talks about how um, it's not necessarily just reducing details. You need to be able to maybe combine a few elements together so they, they look good and uh, all sorts of things like this. Uh, by the way, this is one of the figures that I feel like really went uh, well and I, I, I sort of felt confidence towards it. So I started sketching it larger. Um, I did make a mistake of, uh, again, getting the proportions of the torso and head versus the, the legs uh, incorrectly. The legs are a bit too short, uh, which is something I, uh, I do fix um, after a while. So just getting in that uh, shirt he's wearing. Uh, the character was bold in the reference image, so I will leave some highlights on the head in the <laughs> painted version. Uh, I think you're going to find this really cool. Um, yeah. And I hope a day is not too much to wait for uh, that version. Uh, so anyway, the, what I find it challenging in figures that turn away from you, like this example, the figure here is turning away from us. Uh, what I find really challenging with these ones is getting the hands correctly uh, because it's very, um, very, there's an, an illusion sort of with the shape of the hands. Uh, that makes you see them a certain way that isn't necessarily in, in the true way they are, especially with the elbow and the upper and lower part of the arm. It's um, quite a challenge, and I'm not even sure I got it right. This is a bit at a higher angle, and so uh, this can explain the difference in the sort of lengths of the hands. One hand is uh, sent forward, the right hand, and the left one is at the back, and so uh, arm, sorry, not hand, I don't know. Uh, and uh, this is responsible par partially for the large difference in where they end. So you see one of them ends a little under the backpack and another one is much lower. Um, so right now I just feel like the proportions are wrong. I measure and I see they're incorrect. By the way, this is running at, um, at normal speed. I didn't speed this up. Um, just making sure. Uh, you're aware, but I do work fairly quickly. I, I will usually work a little slower for a, a, a more uh, serious painting or something like this. Uh, for these ones, because it's sketching and it's really quick and fun, I work a little uh, faster. So uh, don't, <laughs> don't be uh, discouraged by my pace. It's really abnormal. So you, you shouldn't sketch as fast for the most part. Um, so yeah, uh, one more uh, figure. This one is a woman uh, in a dress and she's kind of walking down the street just trying to figure out where to place the shoulders. Uh, can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, with this character I think I got the sort of um, gesture correctly, like the, the pose I got correctly. By the way, sorry about the shakiness. I have no idea where it comes from. Um, the table is not shaky, so weird. Um, so yeah, it's I got the gesture correctly and the action correctly, but just the details are terrible, I think. Um, I really wasn't sure if I want to include all of them, but then I decided that I want this to sort of be not just a how to sketch video, but also um, sort of a look at my practice session, sort of hear me, here's me documenting my practice session. And of course, some of it is going to 
have some ups and downs really relates to a video I saw by uh, Patrick Lee Grives um, uh, that, that has a wonderful watercolor channel uh, about some a day that he wasn't inspired a really recent video from a day or two ago and um, yeah it, it just happens sometimes you and you want to share he also said he wants to share uh, this the failures sort of um, you know um, failures as well which aren't really failures because um, I heard something really interesting someone said um, or or it was from a different field not not art but someone said that it's like you have, from the moment you were born, you have this sort of pre-determined uh, number of failures you have to go through to achieve success. I know it's a bit esoteric and a bit uh, woo-woo, but um, I really like this idea and the, the correlation it has with, with painting or sketching or art or any craft for that matter. matter. You sort of have... Uh, this um, experience that you 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 will gain and to gain it you you have to go through some failures you can't it's there's no way that every sketch is going to be good every painting is going to be good every sculpture is going to be good every track you music track you produce is going to be good it just it's not reality um, and each of us depending on how we're wired and sort of how we're built uh, may have, you know, this sort of predetermined number of failures they need to go through. And you can decide to go through them really fast and work uh, hard every day, or you can sort of uh, take your time and, and then you will maybe achieve success a little later, or maybe you will achieve success earlier, but you will master your craft a little later. Uh, there's not necessarily a full correlation between the two. And so, yeah, I'm rambling a bit, but it's really an interesting topic. So just the short of it is that I wanted to show you like the authentic practice session that I had and just I hoped you can benefit from it. Uh, this one was a bit of an unusual uh, figure because of the, the pose and she was sort of wondering and I think holding her hand close to her uh, mouth trying to, I don't know, maybe figure out the way she's going and uh, things like this. Um, and as you can see, it's really funny how almost all figures have a bag, either a bag or a backpack or sort of, you know, a paper bag like this one. Uh, I find it really interesting and uh, just a fun thing to sketch really. Um, yeah, so moving on here to another one. Uh, at this point, I was really like in it, um, and so I felt much more freedom. This character was actually very challenging. I did already uh, a sketch of this very same one just because I came across it in the past in the, in the same image search I was doing. Um, and with this one, I really messed up the proportions, uh, but then I s kind of salvaged a part of it. Um, I got her legs way too short and she was wearing uh, high heels, like crazy heels, and I just added a bit more to them. Um, here I'm, I'm kind of really taking it my way, uh, not even trying to build up the shape of the torso or anything. I'm going straight for the scarf, um, like just the straight to the details, trying to measure where her uh, sort of uh, hip area is or maybe the belly button area stomach, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, I try to sort of assess where it is and where to put it in there. Uh, so the upper part I kind of get correctly, um, but this really brings to light um, for me that I need to work more on the overall proportions. And some of it is a matter of planning, of course. Um, so I don't really plan anything here, so you can expect only so much from an unplanned uh, sketch. By the way, this is great if you're somewhere and you just want to sketch people quickly, like from, not from image reference like I did here, but actually from real life. I'm now uh, like 28 minutes into the recording of the narration here. I should probably have a glass of water next <laughs> to me the next time. Uh, it's a bit, uh, whew. it's really different to record yourself talking as opposed to um, just talk in front of the camera, like really, really different feeling. Um, I find that I can express myself better, I think, without the camera at the moment. Um, I don't know really why. It's really interesting, actually. Um, but yeah, anyway, now getting uh, the legs. And so here you see, if you compare now the length of the legs to the upper part and the head, you'll find that it's way too short. Um, because it's missing maybe one more sort of feet 
Um, and I, what I just decide to do is treat everything you will see in a moment, just adding the hand. But what I do is sort of turn what right now is her shoes. I just turn it into a part of the jeans and add shoes under that. So just a little trick. Try to get away with it. Um, you will tell me how it was in the comments. Um, yeah. So, uh, just very interesting, very interesting exercise. Um, again, a bag, classic. <laughs> There's always a bag. Her hair was uh, one interesting item in all of that uh, sketch. Now I figure out that I did the legs a bit too short, and I will correct it uh, right after the leg. And yeah, I just think it's really fun to see all of the figures you drew, especially as, as soon as you're done with the exercise. So sort of zoom out and take a look at everything. And yeah, now I'm measuring, finding my error and adding a shoe under the shoe, basically. Um, so yeah. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this first part. Tomorrow I'll publish the second part, which is the watercolor. I'm gonna do some uh, two really cool washes, one that's very light, very fun, let everything blend together, and then a second one that pulls it all together, okay? So stay tuned, I will publish it tomorrow, and until then, take care, I will see you again soon.